Spanish colonial historical archaeologist, and my work over the last 40 years has uh, really been devoted to trying to understand how Spanish America, as we came to think of it, uh, was different, how people from Spain were transformed into thinking of themselves as Americans. And to that end, our program has worked in the Caribbean on some very early, late 15th century and 16th century sites, and then in St. Augustine, which picks up the whole sequence of Spanish colonization in 1565. And a big part of the, the Spanish story in the Southeast is the presence of uh, many people of African heritage. Some were enslaved and, and many were not. And we think of them really as black Spaniards, uh, more than people of African heritage. But it's very hard to distinguish in archeological sites any sort of difference or who was who. Um, and we had always hoped to be able to work at a place that we knew was a predominantly African presence. And there was really only one place in the colonial period here that fit the bill, and that was uh, a settlement called uh, Fort Mose. And it's about two miles north of downtown St. Augustine on the marsh, although it would have been a very easy canoe ride from there to the fort uh, in the 18th century. But Fort Mose was established in 1738 by the uh, people who were formerly slaves in the English plantations around Charleston. And they escaped, left, uh, often in the company of the Creek and Yamasee and Wally people. And they made, if they made it to Florida, it was Spain's policy to give them freedom and a place in the regiment uh, if they uh, converted to Catholicism, which they did. Uh, and the people began coming in 1678, but by 1738, there were more than 100 uh, refugees, and so they decided to make a community as the northern defense line between St. Augustine and the English, thinking that the former slaves would be the, the best first defense. And so they built a little fort and a community in this area, and it was inhabited by um, the escapees, and also uh, many of them were married to Native American women, uh, African women who had all escaped with the group, and some were married to either male or female enslaved Africans in St. Augustine. It was a very fluid kind of community, and we were very anxious to take a look and see what that was about, and that's uh, really we couldn't get funding for a long time. And we finally, uh, I was I talked to the Black Caucus of the Florida Legislature, and they became very intrigued at that part of history. Uh, this time, St. Augustine wasn't all that far past the, the racial problems of 1964 and 65. And, uh, but the Black Legislative Caucus was very interested and provided funds to first locate and excavate the site and then to build an exhibition that traveled the country after that. So that's how really I became involved in the context of all the diversity of the Spanish colonies and an essential piece. We had to spend the first year or two really demonstrating that in fact Fort Mose was there because there was some, not resistance exactly, but there was some apprehension in the community about Fort Mose really being here and if that was even a real place. And so we, we really were able to locate the walls of the fort. There were earth walls, part of the moat, uh, part of a watchtower that was in the center, and a few of the, the round structures, huts that people lived in. But in terms of artifacts and material culture and food and so on, it really was very similar to any of the poorer, not poor, but I would say a, a regular soldier's home in downtown St. Augustine. There was no indication of any um, new African Spanish syncretic traits uh, and no real difference in the kinds of food people were eating except that they 
did have more venison and wild game, which is understandable. They were out there on the frontier. And, and so the site was not, if you didn't know the documents in the history, you would not really probably have recognized it as an African-occupied settlement. They became Spanish. Part of that was because they had a Franciscan friar stationed with them at Mose, who lived there. It wasn't a mission, but they were considered neophytes and they were being converted. And the friars lived out at the community. And in the documents, they still refer to the captain of the militia, the Francisco Melendez, who was the leader of the group when they arrived as a cacique. And so, I think the friars and the Spanish authorities approached this as they would uh, an Indian community that uh, was interested in conversion. In the exhibition on Fort Mose, we really hope to show that the story of colonial African American history was not just about slavery. There was clear agency. These people understood that Florida was there and was willing to exploit the uh, antagonism between the New English colony and the and the Spaniards in Florida used that to their advantage. They made alliances with uh, native peoples of the Southeast to get here, and that that was a real story of uh, a struggle for freedom, I mean, real determination. Some of these people had just come from Africa a couple years before, and we also wanted to communicate the general. Uh, sense, which is true, that the experience of Africans in Spanish America was very different from what we're used to hearing about in American history textbooks. And it was very different from what the English uh, position was on slavery. Uh, and we think this has both to do with the long history in Iberia of Moorish occupation and the convivencia, or living together, of uh, people from Arabic regions, uh, Jews, Christians, and, and their ability over 700 years to coexist. And it, it has a lot to do with Catholicism because in the Catholic Church, race was not an impediment to really anything. It was the religious affiliation and, and that's why it was so important that, that the the newcomers convert, which, which they did, of course. Uh, but that was a possibility in the Spanish world. Slavery was seen not as a, in an, an inevitable consequence of where you were born or what your skin color was, but uh, losing a war, a just war. And all of the Crusades and wars against um, the Muslims in Spain were considered just wars, and so anybody who was on the losing side could be appropriately enslaved. And so you see in Spain white and black and Asian slaves, you see black Spaniards owning white Circassian slaves, so it's a very much different situation. And I don't think in our understanding of American colonial history, we get that too much in textbooks and in, in general media sorts of, of uh, coverage of history. A lot of people have uh, thought of Fort Mose as the first underground railway or an underground railway that went from uh, north to south instead of south to north. Uh, and in a sense, a symbolic sense, it certainly is. I myself don't really think of it that way. Much of the Underground Railway, uh, after the at the time of abolition in this country, was really uh, organized not only from these self-determined slaves, but also a lot of other people of different religions and uh, different races who felt so strongly about it that they risked themselves equally. And so it was a place that had stations along the way that were secret and that were collaboration among everybody. Whereas Fort Mose was really the, um, totally about the determination and ingenuity of the people who escaped the plantations.
Just two years after Fort Mose was established in 1738, James Oglethorpe from the Carolinas attacked St. Augustine, and Fort Mose was, in fact, the first uh, line of defense. They knew he was coming, and actually everybody f abandoned Fort Mose and went to the Castillo. Oglethorpe captured the fort, but then the soldiers from Mose and some of the Spanish soldiers crept up again uh, from land and had a what's called the the Battle of Bloody Mose in in the English accounts and wiped out Oglethorpe's regiment there and retook the fort. So there was a certain amount of stealth involved, but it was in fact an effective first line of defense. We also sent uh, a historian, Jane Landers, to Spain before we began working and she spent a long time in the archives and she found the census records of a Fort Mose census that had been taken in the 1750s and there were 86 people living there and they recorded the African nations they came from which were many, Gambia, Congo, Caravali, uh, Mali, all many, many uh, different African groups were represented there. And we think of it really as a polyglot place because the people spoke their own language and also English and came to know Spanish. And I, apparently many of them knew Yamasi and other native languages too. So they were really the ideal brokers on the frontier and Spaniards took advantage of that. Their original languages were not the same, but they had common experience first on the plantations and then in St. Augustine where apparently uh, people became literate in Spanish very quickly. The leader of the group, Cacique and Captain, he was an officer in the regiment, uh, Francisco de Melendez was, wrote beautifully, wrote long accounts of his experience, wrote to the King of Spain, uh, did uh, so I think that at least this group of people were very um, gifted in languages. Fort Mose has really become a symbol of determination and struggle and success among colonial uh, people of African heritage. And it's really important now, more even so than that, than the archeological work that was done there, I think. Thank you.